terrific. I want to ask you about Crosby because I remember seeing Crosby towards near the end of his life. I remember he was on your show, and he actually sang a, me a medley of a lot of his songs. Uh, all the words were wrong. Yeah, all the words were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that he was the one guy that made. I really wanted him probably more than anybody. When he walked toward me, flesh and blood. Hmm. I think that was the first time that I melted. Oh, is that right? Oh, I beautiful thought, man. I always thought of being as being mechanically reproduced. I always thought of being radio records. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When he walked toward me in the flesh, I, I it was melted. thrilling. Oh, yeah. I was so thrilling. That was. Yeah. He liked me. He, you know, he's normally very aloof, romantically aloof. He was icy. Mm. Yeah. That day with me, he was so warm and lovable. His wife was there with him. You know, they, they were fabulous together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what about Hope? We we're talking Marvel, about Hope in Marvel, the car. Around four times, he was very close. Uh -huh. I got a million. Members of Hope on my show. Clark Gable, Marilyn Monroe. Clark, yeah. uh, wrote a book with Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. It's a uh -huh. the Marilyn Monroe story. You wrote it with her? Yeah, it's a big seller. It's, it's uh -huh. on eBay. They're getting about three thousand dollars for it now. Is that really? No kidding. It, that brings up all these mementos and collect. If you just pack it up and put it someplace, what about the value? that's in here not yeah. just the financial value but the value to somebody as americana yeah mm -hmm. or someone's daughter or granddaughter or great-granddaughter's stuff is here do you well, know what i mean i walk in the streets they all say to me joe we miss you our nights are so lonely you know it's uh, mm -hmm. I, I, i'm a part of a lot of people's lives mm -hmm. well you still are and of course yeah, you've got the, you've right. got this saturday night show on wo that's why we're here bloomberg all day no yeah. Who's the guy on the West Coast you do the show with? Some he's another guy. He's sort of like a counterpart. To on the West Coast? You. I think he's from the West Coast. I heard you and him on a radio. You're talking about old music, how it compares to today's music. Uh, and, uh, I forget his uh, name. I, I, I think I know him, but I'm, I, I do a lot of interviews. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about Eddie Cantor you mentioned, and he, I know you had a special Hi, you? fondness Hi, for him. Hi, right, Joe's you? asking who. Uh, yeah. Vincent. Vincent. Vincent, wait a few minutes, honey. Okay. I wanted to ask you about Eddie Cantor because I know he you, you seem to have a real special fondness for him. What was it that was so great about Cantor that made him? I don't know what it was. He was so. Uh, first of all, when I was 15 years old, I got a job writing his radio show. I wrote him a letter one day that uh, how I could improve his radio show. And he answered me, and he was Eddie Cantor to me was the most un theatrical, unactory, unpretentious. He was like me. He'd walk in the streets. He loved everybody. And he mm. was. In his heyday, number one, Eddie Cantor was number one in vaudeville in his heyday, number one in movies in the 30s with Sammy Bullen, mm -hmm. Palmy Days, The Kid from Spain, Roman Scandals, number one on radio, the Eddie Cantor Chase and Sanborn Hour was number one on radio, so and I just loved him, and to me, he was he was, mm -hmm. he was like Banjo, like the Apostle of Pep, he was so peppy at five, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. cheered me up. Some mm -hmm. of these guys, they said you really had to see them live, like Eddie Cantor, like Al Jolson, right, right. that there was nothing like seeing them live in a theater, that nobody no, compares with nothing them. Like Jolson would come down the footlights and say, ladies and gentlemen, you ain't heard nothing yet. If he was in a Broadway show, mm -hmm. about 20 minutes into the show, he would say, should I send the cast home? <laughs> <laughs> and he would sing for the whole team. Uh, I got uh, three uh, names here. Uh, Edward G. Robinson, James Cagney, and Humphrey Bogart. I knew them all. Really? He Cagney on a couple of times. He gave me some souvenirs. Mm -hmm. Who who did you hang with? Like, you know, the... Uh, the, the... Rudy Valley. Rudy Valley was my uh, best friend. I no kidding. I was with Rudy... 25 years ago, wow. he was in California, mm -hmm. and he was always drinking his. Uh, I was very close with Frank Sinatra, got a whole bunch of autograph pictures. Mm -hmm. He would send me on the anniversaries. Mm -hmm. He would watch me at the restaurant with, with that whole Rat Pack, too, uh, with Dean Martin and stuff. Him alone. He would watch me yeah. at a restaurant at night called Mateo's mm -hmm. with Jack Daniels and his camel cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would tell a friend of mine, Hal Stone, he would say, Hal. Tell Joe he's getting fat. <laughs> yeah. Joe, yeah. there's so many millions of things that people know you for, right? And in different contexts. But there may be some things that people don't know. Is there anything, uh, probably a lot of things that people don't know, but is what is the one, if you had to pick one or two things for you to be remembered by? Like, is what is it? What would it be? Is it be knowing so many people or getting into their hearts? Or what would it well, be? Or is it something be, none of us know? It's very gratifying. I mean, the rewarding thing is that no matter where I go, I'll meet doctors, dentists, lawyers, psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. That's how they learned Americana from me. They learned show business, silent movies, certain aspects of culture. And uh... you know what I think it's behind is behind it all a love of people. I think that's so. what. Mm -hmm. Hello. Those are do the, the, the game plan on Monday morning, eleven o'clock. Won't forget. It's critical. 
Joe, it's priceless the way you're yeah, on the phone. Had commercials to work, I would tell him, yeah. but I don't want to. All right. Yeah. You know, we, we want to get, you got you have Vincent waiting. Yeah. We want to get that, we want to get the photo yeah, of should. us. Yeah. And we want you to point out, point out maybe five special things with that yeah. pointer. I'm do a yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, great. I think that, uh, that one of the things I'm proudest of is the fact that I've probably been the only talk show. Are we on? Yes. Yeah. Where uh, I didn't rehearse. I would, would never meet my guests in the green room. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. When you watch a talk show, somebody says, how do you feel? It says on a card, fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So it's just spontaneous. My show yeah. is totally spontaneous. I think mean, yeah. if you're in a restaurant, you don't rehearse the meal. You know? yeah. That's right. So I don't say that's the, that's the way to do it. But it was my way that worked that I was. Totally, it sure did work. Totally, yeah. They're all scripted today. Every, Letterman, Leno, yeah. the whole every, conversation is scripted what, in what the What you think is ad lib, every word, right. every time right. she crosses her legs, every day. Yeah. And, uh, A little, very little spontaneity. It's. Yeah. I think there's there was so much real realness yeah. in you, yeah. and I think that's what people tapped I, into I the most. The chemistry who would go well together on what panel? I tried talent coordinators that never worked because they didn't know how to book it. Mm -hmm. they didn't know my style. I could feel the chemistry. And I never had a talent coordinator after that. I always did my own booking. Hmm. I never had it anyway. And that was. Uh, did you know, like, when you were nine years old or ten years, did you get along very well with a lot? Were you the favorite guy in class, or did nah, you always get along with nah, people just, well? Or? No, nah, it was just adequate. Did you grow up here in Manhattan? Yeah, or? born in the Bronx. Yeah. The Bronx? Yeah. So was I. Where in the Bronx? Yeah. Yeah. Townsend Avenue or University Avenue. Mm. Like it was yeah. Marble staircase. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Did you know Moss Hart by any chance? He was a Very native. Well. I native still see his wife all the time. Kitty Carlisle was nice yes. for you. Kitty uh, Carlisle. Wow. Uh, wow. From what's that line, right? Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Uh, John, we're closing in. Yep. I'm going to call right now. I'm being interviewed here by 60 minutes. I'm going to mention your name. And uh, I'll give you the word, John. Monday at noon. Don't <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be a busy day, I remember. Uh, <laughs> your uh, <laughs> your your wife is with you. She's your in son, she's, she's in Florida. She's fine. She's mm -hmm. Okay. Florida. And you're here every day, more or less, Joe? Or yeah, I'm coming every day. I mean, sitting there and just. Sometimes I get up. Yeah, yeah. but I come in every day. <laughs> 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 to go to the men's room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. stars don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> What did George, George Burns used to say? Other than the occasional heart attack, I feel fine. Yeah. <laughs>